Welcome to Serengeti National Park, located in the Mara region of Tanzania. The name Serengeti is of Maasai origin and translates as the area where land stretches endlessly. In this video documentary, we will explore some of the herbivores that inhabit this 14,763 square kilometer, that is 5,700 square mile, wildlife reserve. Seen here is the white-bearded wildebeest, which, with an estimated park population of 1.5 to 2 million individuals, is certainly the most iconic herbivore of the entire Serengeti ecosystem. Other common names for this species include Mirn's white-bearded wildebeest, Mirn's wildebeest, Western white-bearded wildebeest, Serengeti white-bearded wildebeest, and Serengeti wildebeest. Whatever its common name, it is a subspecies of the smallest and lightest of wildebeest species, the blue wildebeest. The famous clockwise migration of this species requires an entire year to complete and covers some 800 kilometers, that is 500 miles. This is the longest land-based migration on our planet. We can see in this illustration the annual route taken by the wildebeest. In January through March, the white-bearded wildebeests give birth to approximately half a million calves in the southern region of the park. Notably, this calving area extends further south into the Ngorongoro Conservation Area. This first quarter of the year time period is, therefore, a popular time to visit the park as one can observe both the calves being born and the predators, such as lions, cheetahs, leopards, and hyenas, seeking to make a meal of some of these newborns. The spectacle is, of course, a dramatic illustration of predator-prey relationships in the wild. With the onset of the dry season in March, the 1.5 million white-bearded wildebeests begin to move north to the west central sector of the park, thus moving north towards the Masai Mara National Game Reserve in southern Kenya. During this time, the wildebeest are often accompanied by Grant's zebras, Elan's, and Thompson's gazelles. By April and May, these massive herd movements begin to cross the Grumeti River, where many large and hungry crocodiles aspire to intercept them. By July through October, the wildebeest herds are in the northern Serengeti where they must cross, usually several times, the Great Mara River, which is much larger than the Grumeti River and contains many more prey-seeking crocodiles. The wildebeest herds then complete this clockwise circuit by returning to the calving areas of the southern Serengeti and the Ngorongoro Conservation Area. That this migration is very physically demanding upon the wildebeest is evidenced by the fact that an estimated 250,000 wildebeest and 30,000 Grant's zebras die each year from drowning, predation, exhaustion, thirst, or disease. We might then well wonder why the wildebeests and the other herding herbivores that accompany them on at least portions of this arduous journey undertake it when it is so rife with potential death. The answer can be found in the annual cycle of rains that occur throughout the Serengeti. Indeed, white-bearded wildebeests will migrate to those areas where the grasses upon which they feed have grown lush as a result of rain. However, just when the rains will come to a particular region of the Serengeti fluctuates somewhat from year to year. As a consequence, the Serengeti wildebeest migration cannot be precisely predicted. Nonetheless, the general trends of the rain are such that the white-bearded wildebeest movements follow the same general pattern from year to year.
In addition, it must be considered that in the absence of migration, the very plant life upon which the wildebeest depend would be very diminished or destroyed by overgrazing. Were that to occur, starvation might result and cause these herbivore populations to decline significantly. However, as noted, the cyclical nature of the annual rains ensures that this scenario does not come to pass. Note here the head of a large crocodile that is no doubt trying to make a meal of one of these wildebeest. Every year, the great wildebeest herds must cross both the Grumetti River, seen here, and the much larger Mara River. The winding flow of these rivers necessitates that the great herds must cross them multiple times during the yearly migration. Having now considered the white wildebeest migration, let's turn our attention to other aspects of this species' biology. Wildebeest constitute a very specialized yet successful herbivore of the African plains ecosystems. There are two species within the genus Conochides, including the common wildebeest, Conochides taurinus, and the black wildebeest, Conochides gnu this latter example being much smaller than the common wildebeest. The common wildebeest divides into five different subspecies, including Conochides tyrannus mirnsi, the subspecies that occurs in the Serengeti. It is the smallest of the five subspecies, weighing 180 to 225 kilograms, that is 400 to 495 pounds and having a shoulder height of 130 to 142 centimeters, that is 51 to 56 inches. White-bearded wildebeest, like other members of their genus, have a blunt muzzle equipped with a wide row of incisor teeth. This enables the animal to feed effectively on the short grasses that dominate the plains of the Serengeti. As they are very dependent upon water and always moving to where there is green grass, the white-bearded wildebeest are constantly migrating.
that there are abundant dangers along the wildebeest migratory route is evidenced by the fact that this young wildebeest became mired in a mud hole and died there. In the Serengeti, the rut season occurs in June. Males compete with one another for mating privileges and will try to take command of as many cows as they can manage on small, temporarily held territories. About half a million female white-bearded wildebeest are thus impregnated in June here. After an eight-month gestation period, the calves are born primarily during January to March in the Southern Serengeti and Gorongoro Conservation Area described earlier. Uniquely among antelope species, wildebeest calves are extremely precocious and join their mother as soon as they can stand. Sexual maturity is attained in two years. In the wild, the white-bearded wildebeest can live up to 20 years.
The savanna elephant, one of two elephant species to occur in Africa, is perhaps the most iconic animal of this continent, and the only elephant species to occur in the Serengeti. Note that the other elephant species of Africa is the forest elephant, which is native to the dense forests of Central Africa. The savanna elephant is the largest of terrestrial animals to be found on our planet. They are readily distinguished from the Asian elephant by the African example's much larger ears, having two fingers on the tip of the trunk rather than just one, and a saddleback rather than a humpback. In addition, the front legs of the savanna elephant are noticeably longer than the back legs. This species occurs in 23 countries of Africa and inhabits a wide range of habitats, including savannas, open wooded habitats, forests, and deserts. The largest populations have been found in Botswana, Kenya, Namibia, South Africa, Tanzania, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. The social system of savanna elephants is well studied. Family units average 10 females and their calves. Sometimes family units will join together to establish a clan. A savanna elephant clan can number in the hundreds. It is presided over by a matriarch, who is usually the most senior member. Males only associate with the herds during mating. The males will live either solitarily or form bachelor herds. When males attain an age of about 12 years, they are either driven from a family unit or leave of their own accord. Being very large animals, both male and female elephants do not become sexually mature until they have attained about 8 to 12 years of age. However, females show a preference for mating with males in the 30 to 35 year age range. Mating can occur throughout the year, though it occurs more frequently in December through March. Prior to mating, a great increase in testosterone levels, as much as six times higher than normal, causes elephants to enter what is termed must. This state can last for two to three months. Elephants in must discharge a thick tar-like secretion from the temporal ducts on the sides of the head. Males can become especially aggressive and dangerous towards humans and other animals that cross their path at this time. The gestation period for elephants lasts for 22 months the most extensive gestation period known for any animal. Baby elephants are about 91 kilograms, that is 200 pounds, at birth. Initially, their proper development and, indeed, survival depends upon receiving about 10 liters, approximately 2.5 gallons, of mother's milk daily. At one year of age, this milk requirement will double in volume. African elephants are currently listed by the IUCN, that is, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, as endangered. The general population trend is believed to be on the downswing, with there being only an estimated 415,000 extent African savanna elephants throughout Africa as of 2023. Factors underlying this decrease in African savanna elephant numbers include poaching for ivory, effects of war, climate change, and a great reduction in natural habitat as a result of development, agriculture, drilling, and mining. In the Serengeti, there are an estimated 7,000-plus elephants. There is some reassuring news in that African savanna elephants are protected in all 23 countries in which they occur. Perhaps the most critical aspect of their conservation is the protection of elephant habitat.
sharing a common, though very distant, ancestry with elephants and manatees are rock hyraxes. However, these animals are much smaller in size than the giant pachyderms. As their name implies, they hang out in areas where there are boulders, rock formations, or even little nooks on sheer cliffs that provide shelter and protection. Hyrax feet are built for rock climbing. The bottom of each foot is bare and has a moist, rubbery pad that lifts up in the center for a suction cup effect to help the hyrax cling to rocks and other smooth surfaces without slipping. Rock hyrax colonies can contain as many as 50 individuals. The natal multi-mammate mouse is a species of rodent in the family Muridae. It is also known as the natal multi-mammate rat, the common African rat, or the African soft-furred mouse. This species constitutes an important food resource for predators such as small cat species and foxes. Grant's zebra, also known as the common zebra, Birchell's zebra, Plains zebra, and Painted zebra, is one of three species of zebras, the other two being the Mountain zebra and Grevy zebra. Grant's zebra attains a body length of 217 to 246 centimeters, that is 85 to 97 inches, a 47 to 56 centimeter, that is 19 to 22 inch, tail, and a shoulder height of 110 to 145 centimeters, that is 43 to 57 inches. Adult weights range from 175 to 385 kilograms, that is 386 to 849 pounds. Both Grant's and Mountain Zebras live in stable, tight family groups made up of a single stallion, several mares, and their foals. The mares mate only with their harem stallion. As a newborn zebra tends to follow anything that moves, the mother usually keeps other zebras away until the foal has become capable of recognizing the mother's stripe pattern, odor, and voice. In general, zebras can live up to 20 years in the wild and about 40 years in zoos. Together, Grant's zebras and the white-bearded wildebeests possess a strong alarm so system that informs them of impending ah. danger, such as that posed by a lion or pack of hyenas. What the zebra lacks in the way of a more developed sense of smell and hearing is made up for by the wildebeest, while the zebra brings its superior eyesight to this safety system. Because of these predator-detecting abilities from each species, and the fact that the mixed herds of Grant zebras and white-bearded wildebeests in the Serengeti can be so enormous, each individual on the herd is much safer from predator attack then would be the case if it were traveling alone or in a smaller group. Notably, zebras and wildebeests do not compete for the same food resources. As pickier eaters, wildebeests prefer shorter grasses and zebras help them in getting these by cropping grass down to a low level. The Maasai giraffe occurs from central and south Kenya and throughout Tanzania. As of 2023, this giraffe numbers approximately 44,750 individuals, a decline of more than 25,000 from 35 years ago. Also known as Kilimanjaro giraffe, it is the largest of the nine giraffe subspecies. Formerly a resident of all sub-Saharan Africa, as a consequence of habitat loss and deforestation, 
the Maasai giraffe now only occurs in savanna lands of Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, and Tanzania. The coat of the Maasai giraffe is recognized by its irregular star-shaped patterns and is buff-colored below the knee. As no two giraffes have the exact same coat pattern, this characteristic is used to distinguish individuals. Adult males can attain a total height of 5.5 meters, that is, 19 feet, while females reach 4.8 meters, or 16 feet. Males weigh from 1,100 to 1,900 kilograms, that is, 2,475 to 4,275 pounds and adult females weigh from 700 to 1,200 kilograms, that is 1,575 to 2,700 pounds. The Maasai giraffe dines on leaves, twigs, flowers, fruits, and bark. Adept at eating leaves from the tops of acacia trees, the Maasai giraffe tongue can be as long as 18 inches, that is 45 centimeters, thus enabling this tallest of antelope species to readily attain its leafy meals. The Maasai giraffe can attain a speed of 56 kilometers per hour, that is, 35 miles per hour. Maasai giraffes attain sexual maturity at four years old. Approximately 50 to 75 percent of all Maasai giraffe calves become victims of predators, such as lions. Calves are born after a 14 to 15 month gestation period and stand 1.8 meters, that is 6 feet, tall at birth. The rapidly developing calf stays with the mother. After several months, it will join a calf group, which is overseen by a cow giraffe. The calf will live in this nursery arrangement for about one year, after which it can live independently. While lions and hyenas prey upon Maasai giraffes, it is notable that a defensive kick from one of these animals is sufficient to sometimes decapitate a lion. The leopard tortoise is a large and strikingly patterned tortoise that occurs in savanna habitat of eastern and southern Africa. A strict herbivore, it thrives in semi-arid, thorny grasslands and feeds upon the grasses there. During extreme weather conditions, it may seek refuge in the burrows of foxes, jackals, and aardvarks. Leopard tortoises typically attain a length of 40 centimeters, that is 16 inches, and weigh about 13 kilograms, or 29 pounds, though examples occurring more to the extreme north and south of their range may attain lengths of 70 centimeters, that is 28 inches, and weights of up to 40 kilograms, that is 88 pounds. During the mating season, males fight with one another for mating rights, often ramming and budding one another. Nesting time ranges from May to October. The female digs a depression in which she lays about 30 eggs. Eggs hatch in 15 to 18 months. Flat, fast, and flexible, the pancake tortoise is unique in the tortoise family, physically and behaviorally. Their shell is unusually thin, flat, and flexible, helping make the pancake tortoise the fastest of the tortoises. While most other tortoises have solid structural shells, there are many holes in the shell of the pancake tortoise, making it lightweight and agile. In fact, instead of hiding in its shell for protection, the pancake tortoise is able to quickly flee from danger. The flexibility of this shell allows pancake tortoises to crawl into narrow rock crevices, allowing them to use a habitat that is not suitable for any other tortoise species. Unfortunately, these peculiar adaptations make pancake tortoises sought after for the illegal pet trade, making them vulnerable to extinction.
Notably, when confronted by a predator, pancake tortoises flee to the rocky kopchi area and wedge themselves into rocks until the threat is gone. The common eland is the largest member of the bovidae, that is, the family containing the antelope, goats, sheep, bison, and cows. Curiously, however, it can only attain a top speed of about 40 kilometers per hour, that is, 25 miles per hour. The Serengeti has one of the largest eland populations in all of Africa. Yet, despite being relatively abundant, the eland, shy and elusive, can leave the safari enthusiast a bit disappointed when trying to get a reasonably good photograph of it. It is estimated that there are about 36,000 elands living in Tanzania as of 2023. Note that some of these are hunted illegally for bushmeat. The Maasai clip springer is a small antelope species that occurs in both eastern and southern Africa. It is one of 11 subspecies of clip springers. A generally nocturnal species, the Maasai clip springer tends to rest during the day. Like the dick dick, this is a monogamous species. Walking on the tips of its cylindrical, blunt hooves, the Maasai clip springer is especially adept at navigating rocky, steeply inclined terrain via rapid jumps, thus making it a difficult species for predators to capture. Another small, swift African antelope is the Oribi, which resides in savannas of eastern and southern Africa. Attaining a weight of 14 kilograms, that is 31 pounds, and a shoulder height of 51 to 76 centimeters, that is 20 to 30 inches, the Oribi has noticeably large ears. The individual seen here is a male, identified by its erect spike-like horns on its head. The Oribi is notable for being the smallest ruminant that is both a grazer and a browser, as it consumes foliage and herbs when grasses are not available. Oribis usually occur as mated pairs. The topi occurs extensively throughout eastern and southern Africa. It is a lean, sleek antelope that can run at high speed. Having the appearance of a more darkly hued hartebeest, among antelope species, the topi exhibits one of the most variable social and mating systems. The social systems may range in size from a few individuals to huge gatherings. With regard to reproduction, males must command a territory to mate. Such an area may be large and overseen by a single male, or it may be a breeding site filled with males all trying to inseminate females. In either of these extreme two cases, the male must command territory to mate. Notably, colossal-sized herds of topi do not generally occur in the Serengeti. The impala is a lightly built, 
swift-running and powerful jumping African antelope. They occur in southern and eastern Africa as well as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. A key species in the food chain, impalas are preyed upon by leopards, cheetahs, lions, African wild dogs, hyenas, and crocodiles. As can be seen in these video sequences, impalas are renowned for their leaping abilities. Such leaps can reach a height of 2.5 meters or 8 feet and a length of 9 meters or 30 feet. As medium-sized antelopes, impalas range in size from 40 to 80 kilograms, that is 88 to 176 pounds, and have a body length of 120 to 160 centimeters or 4 to 5.3 feet and a shoulder height of 75 to 95 centimeters or 2.5 to 3.1 feet. Males are larger than females. In addition, only males have horns. Like other ruminants, impalas have well-developed molars for grinding the vegetation upon which they feed. As they lack upper incisors when biting their lower incisors pressed against an upper pad. Impalas occur in a variety of African countries, including Tanzania, Kenya, Mozambique, Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, southern Angola, South Africa, and Uganda. Females and young establish herds, which can number up to 200 members. When sufficient food is present, males establish territories into which they direct females and out of which they drive males. Males that have recently been weaned will be dismissed by a territorial male. The male will also take actions to try to keep females in his territory. The impala breeding season, or rut, commences in May and continues for about three weeks. Young are born following a seven-month gestation period. The female will leave the herd in order to give birth to the fawn. After a few days to several weeks, the mother will return to the herd with her fawn. The Thompson's gazelle is a small gazelle species named after researcher Joseph Thompson. In addition to its small size, this species is recognized by its light brown covering, dark stripes that descend laterally, a white rump patch that is continuous beneath the tail, and backward curving ridged horns. The female's horns are shorter, smoother, and more slender. Indeed, occasionally individual females lack horns altogether. Sometimes confused with Grant's gazelle, the Thompson's gazelle is distinguished from this species by being smaller and possessing the white rump patch already noted. Using its keen vision, auditory, and olfactory abilities, the Thompson's gazelle maintains an especially heightened sense of alertness, thus enabling it to detect would-be predators in the open plains, such as those of the Serengeti. The most fit Thompson's gazelle males mark their territories with both a grand display posture and secretions from their scent glands. Females establish loose groups that wander through male territories. Mating may occur at such times.
As just noted, Grant's Gazelle is larger than the Thompson's Gazelle. In addition, it possesses a broad rump patch that continues up onto the back. While some Grant's Gazelles will, like the Thompson's Gazelle, have a black stripe on each side, the larger Gazelle also has a black stripe that extends down the thigh. The horns are leer-shaped and noticeably robust where they join to the head. Horns range in lengths from 20 to 31 inches, or 50 to 75 centimeters. All major predators, including lions, leopards, cheetahs, jackals, African wild dogs, and hyenas, prey upon Grant's gazelles. Adult Grant's gazelles can attain weights from 45 to 65 kilograms, that is 100 to 145 pounds. Length at maturity ranges from 140 to 166 centimeters, or 4.5 to 5.5 feet. This species occurs in grasslands, lowland thornbush, and savanna woodland. Grant's gazelles occur in male-dominated herds. Rather than outright fighting, the male rut behavior usually consists of more ritualized displays as they compete for dominance and mating privileges. Tiny antelopes attaining weights from 3 to 6 kilograms, that is 6.5 to 13 pounds, Kirk's dictics vary in color depending upon habitat, but are typically yellowish-gray to reddish-brown on the back and grayish-white on the belly. Here we see two male dictics sparring with one another over territorial rights. Such conflicts do not usually lead to physical contact and therefore do not injure these animals. Although monogamous, dictics are nonetheless quite tolerant of one another and territorial disputes are rather uncommon. When conflicts do occur, the males will speed towards one another and either stop short of making actual contact or butt heads. This behavior may be repeated, presumably, until the dispute has been resolved. Kirk's dictics commonly occur in acacia savannas of Kenya and Tanzania. Notably, an isolated population of this species also occurs in Namibia. The species inhabits arid, dense thorn scrub to thickets and open woodland, riverine woodlands, and open plains. Like other dictic species, there are four in all, and each is native to Africa. Perhaps the most notable feature of Kirk's dictic is its elongated snout, which functions as a cooling mechanism and, thus, prevents overheating, even when temperatures exceed 40 degrees Celsius, that is, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. This also minimizes the need to drink water. Indeed, like other dictics, Kirk's dictic obtains most of its water from the vegetation upon which it feeds. Kirk's dictic attains a height of from 30 to 40.5 centimeters, that is 12 to 16 inches, at the shoulder and a length of 52 to 67 centimeters, or 20 to 26 inches. Note that all dictics are exclusively herbivorous. Female Kirk's dictics become sexually mature at six months, while males do so at 12 months. Gestation lasts from 169 to 174 days. The female bears an individual offspring. This occurs twice per year at the beginning and termination of the rainy season. Unlike other ruminants, dictics are born nose first while their legs trail behind as the newborn is advancing through the birth canal. Newborn female dictics weigh approximately 560 to 680 grams, or 1.23 to 1.50 pounds, while newborn males weigh 725 to 795 grams, 
or 1.598 to 1.753 pounds. Mother Dick Dick's lactate for six weeks, providing nourishment to the fawn for only a few minutes at each feeding session. Kept hidden for some time after birth, the young quickly reach adult size by seven months. At that time, the young are forced out of the parents' territory, with the fathers dismissing the sons and the mothers dismissing the daughters. It is unknown just how long wild dictics may survive, but in captivity they have been known to survive for up to 17 years. The ellipse, or common waterbuck, is the only waterbuck subspecies, one of 13 total in Africa, that occurs in the Serengeti. Closely associated with water, a layer of oil in the hair repels moisture. The common waterbuck is readily distinguished from other antelope species by its thick dark brown coat and white inner thighs. Only males possess horns, which the animal can use to defend itself when attacked. A herd of this species may consist of females and young remaining in the territory of several males, or it may consist of a female with offspring staying with a single male. This herbivore feeds upon grasses, reeds, and foliage. Waterbucks in general inhabit grasslands, riverine forests, and woodlands. They attain weights of from 160 to 300 kilograms, or 350 to 660 pounds, and can stand as tall as 120 to 136 centimeters, approximately 50 inches, at the shoulder. The common waterbuck is preyed upon by lions, leopards, African wild dogs, and crocodiles. A single calf is born at any time of the year. The mother guides the calf to a hidden area and visits it three to four times daily so that the calf may suckle. In order to avoid attracting predators, the mother cleans the calf after each suckling session. Despite this, many calves fall prey to predators. While also eating grasses, calves suckle for from six to eight months. After suckling is completed, females tend to stay with the mother's group while young males may establish bachelor groups. Adult weight and size are attained at about 3.5 years. The crested porcupine is a terrestrial mammal. It very seldom climbs trees, but can swim. It is nocturnal and monogamous. The crested porcupine takes care of the young for an extended period, and small family groups consist of the adult pair and young of various ages. In defense, when disturbed, they raise and fan their quills to make themselves look bigger. If continually bothered, the crested porcupine will stamp its feet, whir the quills, and charge the disturber back and first, trying to stab the enemy with a thicker, shorter quills. These attacks are known to have killed lions, leopards, hyenas, and even humans. The hippopotamus, also known as the water horse, or simply hippo, is an amphibious ungulate that, considered as a land animal, is second only in size to the elephant. It is comparable in size to the white rhinoceros. Their immense size makes the hippopotamus largely invulnerable to predators. However, lions have been known to kill and feed upon hippos, this usually occurs when the large amphibian is attacked by the great African cats on land. The average mature male hippo length is 3.5 meters, or 11.5 feet, while it stands 1.5 meters, or 5 feet, at the shoulder. Mature males can weigh as much as 3,200 kilograms, or 7,000 pounds. We can note that females are about 30% smaller than males. 
Adaptations to aquatic life include the ears, eyes, and nostrils occurring high on the head. This enables the animal to detect the above-water environment while remaining almost entirely submerged. The body is dense and enables the hippo to walk on the bottom. They remain underwater for up to five minutes on a breath. It is necessary that the hippo remains close to water as the skin, often exposed to the sun, rapidly dries out while on land. Lacking sweat glands, hippos have skin glands that secrete an oil pink liquid that can be described as a lotion. This prevents sunburn. The secreted lotion is sometimes misinterpreted as the hippo sweating blood. Hippos generally prefer shallower waters where they can sleep while remaining partially submerged, an activity known as rafting. Population size limits are set by the day-use pool size in which they take refuge. During droughts, hippos must often travel great distances to find a suitable water source. This can lead to many members of a herd dying. Active nocturnal feeders, hippos may travel up to 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles along established paths to reach grassy foraging areas. Vegetation, mostly grasses, are taken into the mouth by clamping down with the tough lips and jerking the head. Note that the prominent incisors and canines function exclusively in defensive or offensive roles. Ingested food ferments in the stomach for an extended time period. Hippopotamus excrement constitutes a very significant nutrient for many African rivers and lakes as many fish species feed upon this. Females, known as cows, are sexually mature at 7 to 15 years, while males become sexually mature at 6 to 13 years. Dominant males, called bulls, generally initiate mating. A dominant bull may maintain mating privileges on a section of river for as long as 12 plus years. Most mating occurs when cows congregate in these areas during the dry season. Though battles between males are infrequent, the slashing incisors and canines can inflict death-causing wounds in opponents. After an eight-month gestation period, Cows give birth to calves that are about 45 kilograms, that is 99 pounds. The calf can seal off its nostrils and ears from water such that it can suckle underwater. Calves begin to consume grasses at one month and are weaned in six to eight months. Cows produce a calf every two years. Maximum age attained in the wild usually does not exceed 40 years. The Cape Buffalo is the sole member of the Boveni, the buffalo and cattle tribe, to occur in Africa. Along with the lion, leopard, elephant, and rhinoceros, the Cape Buffalo is one of the big five of Africa. A very robust animal, the Cape Buffalo was claimed by many hunters to be the most dangerous of the Big Five to hunt. This is due to the fact that injuring the animal, for example with a non-lethal gunshot, often brings out the worst in its notoriously revengeful and ill temper. Indeed, there are many reports of an injured Cape Buffalo seeking out the hunter that shot and wounded it a day after this event occurred. With their powerful overall build and thick muscular neck, the Cape Buffalo can use its down and back curving horns to fling a hunter 15 feet in the air like a rag doll. That's about four and a half meters in the air. And Cape Buffaloes have been known to severely injure or kill lions when the big cats seek to make a meal of this extremely formidable prey item. Not an especially high-statured bovine, the Cape Buffalo stands just 130 to 150 centimeters, that is 51 to 59 inches, tall at the shoulder. However, it is nonetheless a very massive animal, weighing in at 425 to 870 kilograms, or 935 to 1,910 pounds. 
bulls have an approximately 100 kilogram, that is 220 pound, weight advantage over cows. The bull's horns, as much as 100 centimeters, 40 inches across, are also more massive than those of the cow. This species is especially gregarious. Herds are made up of both sexes and can number from a few individuals to more than 2,000. Calves may be born at any time of the year following a nine-month gestation. However, many of these births coincide with the end of the rainy season when nutritious grass promotes rich mother's milk for the calves. Unlike the gazelles that we saw earlier, the Cape buffalo calf is not hidden by the mother. Rather, the calf stays with the mother as the latter attempts to stay with the safety of the herd as much as possible. Common warthogs are a species of wild pig with many similarities to the domestic pig raised by humans. They are voracious foragers, using their very powerful neck muscles to drive their snouts into soils to uncover anything edible. The soil in an area of ground that has been foraged by a warthog or other species of pig is obviously overturned, and it is unlikely that anything edible remains. Warthog's excellent sense of smell helps direct their foraging efforts to places most likely to have tubers, roots, or small animals directly under the surface of the soil. Common warthogs do not dig their own burrows. They often take over dens or abandoned aardvark burrows to seek shelter and raise their young. Family groups, or sounders, are comprised of females and their young. Males are generally solitary in the wild. Warthogs have poor eyesight, but excellent senses of hearing and smell. They are vocal and use chirps, squeaks, and grunts to communicate. During friendly greetings with other warthogs, they will rub their faces together to exchange the products produced by the glands around their eyes. Common warthogs are light gray to brown in color, with very sparse black or brown hair all over the body. They have large heads with manes that run along the spine to mid-back. Their weight ranges from 110 to 250 pounds, and body length averages 3 to 5 feet. Both males and females possess large upper canine teeth, which grow into tusks. Tusks in males can grow up to 24 inches, or 60 centimeters, but average around 5 to 6 inches long. That is 12 and a half to 15 centimeters. Warthogs have three pairs of quote-unquote warts along their faces. These so-called warts are better referred to as tubercles because real warts are a symptom of a viral infection, whereas a warthog's tubercles are simply protrusions of natural connective tissue and skin that likely help in the exchange of facial glandular secretions during social gatherings. Breeding season for warthogs occurs in the spring, right after the rainy season has ended. Males typically will not mate until they are four years old. They must compete with other males over females and will use their blunt upper tusks, not their more dangerous lower tusks, to do so. The gestation period lasts from about 160 to 170 days. Females live in sounders, but will isolate themselves in burrows to give birth. Piglets are born eltricial, with an average litter size of two to three piglets. Young warthogs remain in the burrow for about six to seven weeks and are completely weaned at about five months old. Males play no part in the upbringing of piglets. The nocturnal African savanna hare sports a coarse, thick furred coat covering a body length of 50 centimeters, or 20 inches. Using their two pairs of well-developed incisors, they consume leaves, buds, roots, berries, fungi, and twigs. Unlike rabbits, hares do not dig burrows. Females give birth to one or two young. The young are born fully furred and with eyes open.
The spring hare is an unusual rodent that has been taxonomically assigned its own family. They are very capable of making great leaps with their hind legs. Sharp claws on the forelimbs enable this species to dig very effectively. The female usually bears three babies per year. The olive baboon is a large, heavily built animal with sturdy limbs. They look rather dog-like with their long pointed muzzles and in the way they walk on all four legs. They have very long tails. Their running resembles galloping like a horse. Their jaws are very powerful and they have long pointed canine teeth. The olive baboon's eyes are set closely beneath a prominent brow ridge. Their ears are large, hidden amongst their thick fur. Adult males have a thick, gray, furry ruff around their cheeks. Olive baboons have cheek pouches where they can store food as they forage. Young baboons are darker, almost black, and don't have heavy facial fur. Olive baboons inhabit equatorial Africa from Senegal across to northern Zaire, Ethiopia, Uganda, Kenya, and northern Tanzania, living in many different habitats within this large range. They are often found in savanna, but also in moist evergreen forests, rocky cliffs, dry woodland, open grassland and desert habitats, and near human settlements. This species is diurnal, spending most of their time on the ground. At night, they sleep in trees or cliffs, traveling as a family in the morning to feeding grounds. Before moving off is the time to socialize while the young ones play. As the day moves towards its close, the olive baboons go back to their sleeping quarters and again spend time socializing, doing activities such as grooming before they sleep. Olive baboons generally live in troops of between 20 to 60 animals, sometimes up to 100 individuals. In a typical troop, the adult males number seven or eight, with two times that number of females and their young. If troops encounter one another, the larger group may cause the smaller one to be displaced, or they just ignore each other. Olive baboons communicate by means of vocalizations and a large range of facial expressions. Staring, raising eyebrows, and baring their teeth are displays of aggression. Olive baboons are polyandrous, or promiscuous, meaning that both the males and females have multiple partners. Females seek out the males, generally the strong, well-established ones. There is no breeding season, though mating during the rainy season is more common. One baby is born, and rarely two, following a gestation of about 187 days. A mother carries her newborn at her breast while holding it with one arm. Then, at four to five weeks old, a baby will sit on her back to ride. The baby first eats solid food when five or six months old, being weaned at eight months. Females groom and play with the young. The male helps with rearing and grooming and defends his females when necessary, the young ones often choosing to follow or sit next to the males. All of baboons become reproductively mature and start to breed at the age of 7 to 10 years. Unlike the olive baboon, the vervet monkey possesses the characteristic flatter face found in most primates. This small, black-faced monkey is common in East Africa. Males are slightly larger than females. Its habitat ranges from woodland to savanna to high bush. A hierarchical system regulates feeding, fighting, mating, friendships, survival, and even grooming. Notably, infants generate considerable interest in the adults, with subadult females doing all they can to be given the privilege of grooming or holding a mother's baby.
Among black and white rhinos, black rhinos are the smaller of the two African rhino species. Black and white rhinos can be distinguished by the shape of their lips. Black rhinos have hooked upper lips, whereas white rhinos are characterized by a square lip. Black rhinos are browsers rather than grazers, meaning they are herbivores who do not feed on low-growing vegetation, and their pointed lip helps them feed on leaves from bushes and trees. They have two horns, which grow continually from the skin at their base throughout the rhino's life, like human fingernails. The front horn is longer than the rear horn, averaging around 19 inches long, or about 42 centimeters. The population of black rhinoceroses declined dramatically in the 20th century at the hands of European hunters and settlers. Between 1960 and 1995, black rhino numbers dropped by a sobering 98% to less than 2,500 individuals. Since then, the species has made a tremendous comeback from the brink of extinction. Thanks to persistent conservation efforts across Africa, Black rhinoceros numbers have doubled from the historic low 20 years ago to more than 6,000 as of 2023. However, the black rhinoceros population is still critically endangered and a great deal of work remains to bring their population up to even a fraction of what it once was.